Hi boys and girls, it's Mrs. Loftus again. We're ready for chapter 9. It's called Surf's Up. I wake up. No volcanoes. I'm not sick and I'm not going to school. Mom says Samantha has to go to school, which she thinks is unfair, but it's not. I have to do a whole list of things today. I'm going to be very busy and Samantha wouldn't be useful. She'd just play around. Nana's coming over. I have to admit that she's not very useful either, but she thinks she's a great help, which makes her happy. My list of jobs. Change the light bulb in Mom's side lamp. Mom would live in the dark without me. Fix the armchair. It's falling apart. I'll have to nail the arm on. It nearly came off when Samantha jumped on it last week. I need my hammer for that. Hang up Samantha's new photograph of Puss in her bedroom. It is an excellent character photo. Everyone says the cat looks so smug. She's lying in her favorite chair with her fur shining and her tail wrapped around her. There, there's this contented look on her face. I'll need my drill for that. Number four, fill in the crack in the bathroom tile. That's natural wear and tear. It's a grout job. After all that, I'm going to do a photo shoot of Nana and Jack's Ponto. I'm photographing every stage of the Ponto's development for scientific records. I'm also photographing Nana just because she's Nana. She is a good character to do. Her green eyes are interesting because they are never still. She's always investigating things like what's in our fridge or where is the plant she bought and it hasn't been watered or who is doing karate because she's noticed my magazine. Her face is a lived in face with sunspots and lines and soft light hairs that sit on top, her, on top of her top lip but her cheeks are still pink and her eyes are like Samantha's. I want my face to be lived in when I'm old. That is if I ever get to be old with George Hamill around. Samantha grumps out the door and nearly falls over the cat. I call out goodbye to mom and her from my bedroom window. Samantha gives a wave and mom blows a kiss and does a twirl in her navy blue uniform. Right, must get to work. Tools, ah, everything is in order. On my birthdays and at Christmas, I get another tool to add to my collection. Last Christmas, Mom brought me, bought me my electric drill and Nana bought the drill bits. I get nails, my excellent top grade hammer, wood glue, and a chisel for fine work. The armchair is very broken. I turn it upside down, lay out my tools, and get ready to begin when Nana shuffles through the front door. Her face crinkles into a smile. Jack! I'm here just in time to help. I roll my eyes. This means I'll be slower. She puts her specials on the kitchen table, three chocolate bars, a loaf of whole wheat bread, and a t-shirt. Come on and try this on. I'll buy another one if it fits. It was half price. Nana, I'm busy. But I bought this for you. It'll only take a minute. Sure. If I know Nana, it'll take an hour because we'll have to discuss the t-shirt and if it fits and if I like the color or do I want another color and we'll have to eat our chocolate bars and have a drink and Nana will have to go to the bathroom because she says she's got a weak bladder and I'll have to tell her all about what I'm fixing. I am right. I look at my watch. It's been an hour. Nana sits on the couch so that she can get a good view of my work <clears throat> and give me advice. Jack, that's very good. But what about that bit sticking out of the leg? Jack, be careful not to put the glue on the carpet. Jack, you need another nail here. Jack, the other leg wobbles too. Jack, I'm going to kill Nana. No, I'd better not. I have to have a plan. I put on one of Samantha's quiet, boring songs. Then I hammer in time with the slow beat. It's warm in the family room because we get the morning sun. Nana's head slowly bends forward. She lurches sideways for a second and then settles back into the couch. Nana's asleep. I like hammering and fixing with the music playing. Nana quietly snoring on her old couch. I close Samantha's bedroom door when I drill a hole to hang Puss's picture. Nana doesn't wake up. I'm finished. I put my tools back in order and then get my camera. Puss has curled herself right next to Nana. Puss is a people cat. When I look at them through the camera lens, I feel this funny, warm feeling inside. Puss and Nana look the same, round and snuggled with their whiskers drooping and their bodies moving in time with their breath. Puss's paws on Nana's lap and Nana's hand is on Puss's stomach. I click. Nana wakes up for lunch. 
She loves food, and afterwards we play cards until Samantha comes home with Anna. There is news from school. I don't want Nana to know about what has happened there. She'll get upset. Anyway, I am not going back to school. Mom said I didn't have to go back. Anna is excited. The principal called a school assembly in the hall today. Mr. Angelo stood up and talked about bullying and how this school won't tolerate it. He didn't mention Jack's name. Kids are going to get suspended for sure. Anna stamps her foot. No one is allowed to push anyone around. No one will push you around anymore, Jack. I roll my eyes. I don't believe that. Anna gets this worried look, and the crinkles around her green eyes get tight and small. Was Jack pushed around by other children? No, no, Nana. A Anna's joking. I stare at Anna to be quiet, but she's not. A substitute teacher is taking our class, and Mr. Angelo isn't teaching us for the rest of the week. He's carrying out a huge investigation. She takes a breath before she gives the major news. George Hamill wasn't in class all day today. He is in serious trouble. Who is this George Hamill? Nana asks. He's the worst kid of the lot. He's always threatening kids. Anna pushes back her black curls. Now he's the one who's scared. Anna looks at me. I rub my prickly hair. I don't want to say anything. That's good. I take out my camera and start clicking Anna. Don't do that, Jack. I click again. Stop it. This is important. Aren't you happy? Happy? I click Samantha, poking her tongue out at me. I'm happy I could fix up all the things Mom wanted. I'm happy that Nana's here and you're here and Samantha. I put down the capper. camera. I ha I'm happy Rob's coming over. He's taking me surfing. I tease a little bit. I'm happy your dad was going to the police. It was crazy. <clears throat> I cough. It was kind of a nice. It was kind of nice that he wanted to do that. Anna nods. Dad does get emotional. People make fun of him because he's Italian. I don't like that. But he thinks it's funny. They wave their hands around and joke and joke about him being a fruitologist. Like I did. You got angry with me that I was only joking. Nana's been listening. Even though it is hard for her to catch all the words, she raises her finger to get our attention. You have to laugh at yourself sometimes and the silly things of life. Anna, I like your father. He laughs because he knows it doesn't matter that he moves his hands around a lot. He's Italian. What can you expect? Nana smiles. What's important to him is his family, you, and a successful business. That's true. We've just got to understand jokes what they mean, what they're used for. Sometimes people make jokes that hurt. They're not meant to be funny. Some jokes blame people for problems. Some make them into scapegoats. Nana puts her hand over mine. You'd never do that, would you, Jack? No. I can't tell Nana that I was called butthead. It would really hurt her. Rob's come home early. He decided we are all going to the beach for surfing, swimming and fish and chips on the grass slope above the beach. Nana can come, and Anna, ask your parents, Anna, and get your bathing suit. Everything's packed up by the time Mom opens the door. The car is loaded with towels, pails, and shovels, picnic chairs, a folding table, and a beach ball. Get your suit on, we all shout at Mom. We're off to the beach. Rob and I head for the surf. Anna and Samantha are collecting shells for the sandcastle. And when I look back at Mom and Nana, they're talking. Surf's up, Rob shouts as he dives into the wave and I dive in after him.